technically, is Imam Arij Anwar. He holds a Bachelor of Islamic Sciences in Fiqh and Usul al Fiqh from Al Madina International University. He has also completed degrees in computer science from Waterloo and education from UFT. Uh, he's pursuing a master's in tafsir from Al Madina International University. Um, and currently, Imam Arij heads Qutuf Academy for Advanced Arabic Studies, teaches the steps to Arabic program at Al Kawthar Institute, and serves as Islamic Education Coordinator for the London Muslim Mosque. So, thank you for taking the time to join us today, Imam Arij. How are you? Assalamu alaikum. Uh, I'm doing well. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, I can hear. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, uh, everybody, for uh, joining us, and uh, thank you to our, our esteemed speakers uh, who are speaking. Alhamdulillah, uh, brother of the Rashid, uh, mashallah, very very inspirational, and uh, also uh, Sheikh Abdullah for allowing me to go before you. I actually had uh, another thing uh, that was scheduled that kind of got pushed up so uh, totally uh, uh, appreciate the accommodation here inshallah um, so there is um, the topic at hand is a very very important topic the topic at hand is really um, you know I cannot overstate its importance um, which is like what is what, what's our what's our uh, role as Muslims, right? That, that specific is what does Islam say about injustice and suffering of our Uyghur brothers and sisters? But really, the important part is what is what is our responsibility towards them? That's really the 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 key uh, part here. So, what I would say, like Islam, the Deen, as in, as 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 a as a way of life, uh, is very clear on on oppression. Okay. On, on injustice is that uh, the Prophet ﷺ said la darara wa la dirar. there is no uh, you know harm that is supposed to perpetuate harm is supposed to stop uh, the Quran on numerous occasions makes the point that ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu or you who believe kunu qawamina lillahi shuhada abil qist stand up for justice uh, for the sake of Allah uh, stand up in support of justice in against or in opposition to injustice. This is part of you know being a believer. Yeah, amanu, or you who believe Allah is linking the two things together. The idea is very straightforward. This is a part and parcel of our iman to stand up for what is wrong, uh, or stand against, excuse me, what's wrong, and stand with the oppressed, irrespective of who that may be irrespective it's not only that we stand up for muslim causes it is completely uh you know uh, the islam is completely um neutral on this aspect religiously it is uh for the sake of allah for the sake of justice okay the quran even says that laqad anzalna uh لَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا رُسُولَنَا بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ وَأَنزَلْنَا مَعَهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْمِزَانَ لِيَقُومَ النَّاسُ بِالْقِسْتِ Allah has sent the messengers uh, with the, the book and the, uh, the mizan. The mizan here is the scale, meaning like the ability to implement the scripture. لِيَقُومَ النَّاسُ بِالْقِسْتِ So people can live in justice. That you can say like the overarching objective of scripture and revelation uh, on, in a, on a dunya level, on a day-to-day -day level is uh, justice is established, right? On a, a level of, on a personal level, it is to attain salvation, to enter paradise and to be saved from the fire of hell. But on a communal level, in the day-to-day -day life of the world, you can make a very strong case that the purpose of revelation is to allow people to live justly and freely uh, without oppression this is the stance uh, that we uh, see um, and the Quran chastises people who don't live up to this responsibility particularly people who are leaders of faith the Quran says uh, criticizing and chastising the rabbis and and, and, and priests of the past who stood, did not stand up 
uh, against injustice, in fact, supported it, were a party to it, were not, uh, you know, were even enablers of it. How terrible uh, was it that uh, the thing that they did? So this is uh, a responsibility that the deen places firmly upon all of us, and especially upon those of us who are in a position of religious leadership. This is the take of the, of the deen, and this is for everybody, whether the oppressor or the oppressed is Muslim. It doesn't matter. You stand up for justice irrespective. The Prophet said, Unsur akhaka zaliman o mazluma. Help your brother, whether he is the oppressor or the oppressed. The Sahaba wondered, how do you help the oppressor? The Prophet said, you stop him from his oppression. So it applies universally as a principle of the deen, as an objective of revelation. Okay? Now, when it comes to our brothers and sisters who are oppressed, the urgency is heightened. The sense of solidarity or the feeling of solidarity is amplified. The, uh, the, the, the pain is personal. It, that's how it has to be. It has to be personal. Our brothers and sisters who are going through this genocide, this is not some other person. It's got to be personal. We have to feel their pain. This is what our deen teaches us. The Prophet said, The believer, the, the example of the believers is like a building. It's like a structure. Each reinforces the other. You see, meaning uh, if you have a structure like a wall, each brick reinforces the other brick. That's the relationship that we have. Okay. Like he did this to his fingers. That this is how closely knit we are as believers. We're tight. We're supposed to be tight like this. And this transcends our ethnicities. This transcends our uh, our backgrounds and the places that we live in. It transcends everything. The only thing here that matters is we're all believers in Allah and His Messenger. And that bounds us like this together. That is how we're supposed to be. Uh, the Prophet also said that... Uh, you know, the example of the believer is like a body, right? When one part of it is hurt, the whole body hurts. Uh, and, and it's as the whole body is afflicted with fever. Uh, the idea being we're not just, in, you know, a small community by ourselves. And we don't care about other Muslims around the world. We are a connected community across the world. And we, the pain of our brothers and sisters in one part of the world is our pain. And our brothers and sisters who are the, the Uyghur, our brothers and sisters who are going through this genocide, their pain is our pain. That's our responsibility. So the, desire, the need to step up and stand against injustice has to be even greater. The urgency even higher. The solidarity even greater. Because these are our own brothers and sisters in Islam, not just any other person. You see, that is how we have to approach uh, in, uh, our, our, uh, this particular situation. Now, what do we do here, right? What is it that we do? Because this is a very, you know, uh, this is not as, as something as easy uh, to fix as, you know, um, sending an email or something, right? You know, it's not, it, it won't just be done right away. This is a complicated situation, okay? The thing is, we're not responsible for changing the world. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not going to ask us why we did not change the world. That is not what, what our uh, accountability is on. Our accountability is simple. Our accountability is what did you do when you saw something wrong? That's it. It's not about, did you change it? That's not the question. The question is, what did you do about it? And the, the Prophet has given us a step-by-step -step procedure. The person who sees evil should change it, must change it. If you're unable to change it, then you must speak out against it. And if you can't even speak out against it, then know 
in your heart and in your mind that this is evil. And that is the weakest level of Iman. Okay, I'll say two things about this hadith. Number one, weakest level of Iman is to recognize evil as evil. If you don't even recognize evil as evil, that means you've gone below the weakest level of Iman, which means what? There is no Iman left. You could be praying and giving zakat and fasting, but the moment you're... You, you, you have the inability to see evil for what it is as evil. That is when Iman doesn't exist. It ceases to exist. Dangerous thing. We have to be so uh, mindful of what Iman represents. It's not just saying the Shahada and praying and going through the rituals. It's so much more. It's so much more. So here, brothers and sisters, is the critical part. Evil has to be eradicated and there's levels to it. If you are at the below the lowest level, your iman is now no longer there. That's what the Prophet is implying. That's point number one I like to make of this phrase. Point number two is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not going to ask us, did you stop the genocide? Because it's not in our individual's hands. He's not going to ask us, why didn't you fly there and rescue the people? Because that's not in our control. What he will ask us is what did you do? What did you do? Okay. If you were able to stop evil, the question is, why didn't you stop it? If you're not able to stop the evil, which is this case, we can't stop it with our own hands. The question will be, what did you say about it? Why didn't you speak out against it? That's the question will be asked on the day of judgment. That's the responsibility that we're going to that we owe to our brothers and sisters who are going through this. What did you say about it? Why didn't you say anything about it? Were you so scared? Were you so apathetic that you didn't feel like saying anything? That's the question. That's our uh, responsibility. And this is where we can leverage our each other, come together and come together, unite for this across the, the world. Alhamdulillah, here we have you know, uh, people from all over the world, alhamdulillah, get gathering together to have this conference virtually. This is beautiful. Alhamdulillah. We have to come together and continue to speak against this evil. Continue to speak against this evil. Take actions in whatever capacity we can to change. That is our responsibility. That is the accountability that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will hold us accountable to. It's not that we are expected to transform the world. It is that we are expected to do our part. As the Quran mentions in the story of the Sabbath, you are, your responsibility is to do what is right to the best of your ability as a way to say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the Day of Judgment, Oh Allah, I did the best I could and the rest is in your hands. And that is at the end of the day, brothers and sisters, our responsibility. We, we feel the grief and the pain of the of our brothers and sisters. And we must feel that pain. If you don't feel the pain, something is wrong. Okay? Now, let that pain not paralyze you. Or make it make you just completely, um, completely deflated. Let that pain serve as motivation. Let's do something about this. But those that what we do has to be sustainable, has to be concrete, has to be something that it's the best and the most we can do. You see? And that is our responsibility for us right now, particularly say as someone who's from Canada right now, our responsibility is we speak out against it on our social media forums. We speak to our communities about this. We speak to our local elected representatives about this. And this is a big deal. It's a huge deal. Our elected representatives, they're there to be heard. Like, oh, excuse me, they're there to hear us. We're here to be heard by them. Okay? We have to speak to them and put pressure on them. These are our responsibilities. Wallahu ta'ala. And you, wherever you are in the world, you figure out what is my responsibility? How can I maximize my effort towards my, my brothers and sisters so that on the day of judgment we can say to Allah, Allah, we did our best. And then the rest, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who is in charge of the world. 
He is in charge of the world. He says, The days are, he fluctuates between people. One day someone's at the top, next day they're at the bottom. Next day they're back on the top. So the world is in the control of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We leave it in his hands. And we know that our brothers and sisters who are being persecuted, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is elevating them to the highest levels of Jannah and accepting them as shuhada. But that doesn't mean that we just sit back and say, okay, whatever. Us, we are there or we are here to try our best to stop this oppression. We ask Allah to give us this tawfiq and uh, to give us the ability to do something so that some change can come in this world and we can have our uh, we can we can have our presentation to Allah that this is what we did for our brothers and sisters who were oppressed. Jazakumullah khairan. Thank you very much for having me and for accommodating uh, Sheikh Abdullah. I know you're here. Uh, so thank you for letting me speak before you.